Okay, so my camera died. Really annoying, but whatever. It's my fault. Um, hi. Good morning. Welcome to my channel. Also, welcome to my crib. Hold on, let me go get... Let me see what time it is, because I did mess some shit with you. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, dude. It, oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so excited. I just am so grateful and yes uh, but we'll, we'll get into the to the apartment soon um i was journaling this morning um that's something that i've been putting like go i mean i've always journaled my whole entire life but i have I, mean, I, I ebbs and flows we fluctuate and i have really been making a concerted effort um since brian passed to really check in with myself and yeah so i've been really doing that and as of lately I've been kind of been playing kind of like a morning routine of journaling um journaling before I engage in something that is stressing me out or getting me worked up because I'm working on new habits a new self-concept and, and not allowing kind of like the patterns of the old my old belief system kind of run amok and me just move on autopilot so I have to really check in and be intentional about saying hey all right this anxiety that you're feeling the stress that you're feeling is the clash of the old and the new. And so you have to take a deep breath, become aware of that, and then acknowledge what it is that we want, how we feel, and then move forward. So that's, journaling's been really, really instrumental for that. In fact, the other day I had a situation where I was so anxious and, um, I didn't even want to journal. I was like, I just want to deal with this. I just want to deal with it. I just want to deal with it. But then I had to like talk to myself and I was like, hey, like I know that you want to just deal with this and you want to skip it over because you're feeling super whatever, but you need to just, we need to take a deep breath. We need to slow it down. That is, that's not really what you want to do. You want to get rid of these feelings, okay? So how we're going to actually address them and let them subside is we're going to address them we're gonna write this down we're gonna write it out if we have to voice memo, we want to voice memo instead we can do that but we need to explore this we need to figure out what it is that we're actually feeling address the root issues of it and then move forward from a place of wholeness peace joy love in ourself okay so that was a paid advertisement for journaling <laughs> um anyway 10 out of 10 recommend so anyway I was journaling this morning and I wrote about this situation where they asked me, okay, I'll actually just read it. Okay. This is obviously you're not going to get the whole journal entry, but just bear with me. Yeah. I had said something like, I just set my boundaries and keep it pushing. And he said, you have boundaries. And that put me on my heels a bit. I thought so, but I realized that even though I may choose not to respond to things I don't like or that which makes me uncomfortable, I have yet to actually speak up and tell people what's up. So essentially, I'm keeping quiet to keep the peace, but it's only my perception of their peace that I'm prioritizing and not my own. I am understanding of why I have done that and I do forgive myself. I am just going to do a better job moving forward to speak up on behalf of myself and prioritize my own damn peace. Prime example, a friend and I were on the phone and at some point I realized they were not listening to me and they were distracted by something on their phone. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to put them in an awkward position and make things weird. I'm sorry. As I write that out, I hear how insane that sounds. In that example, I just ate the fact that they weren't paying me any attention when they should have eaten that realization that they weren't paying me attention. My piece is the only piece I should worry about keeping. And I just want to dive into that because I think it's so juicy. It's so interesting and exploring my thought process and kind of thinking out loud with you so that maybe if you resonate with any of what I'm saying, maybe, you know, this thought process will help you kind of move forward in your own way. But I really want to just kind of document, you know, my journey of growth really um, more intentionally, more openly. So anyways, that's why I make these videos. And if you're interested in that, definitely, you know, do your, do your thing, subscribe to it, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, anyways, back to the topic. That situation happened and I became aware of this notion of keeping the peace and how even though I have in my own brain established like, I don't really fuck with that, I don't really fuck with this, so I'm not gonna give it the energy, I have yet to actually speak up about it and set that boundary in stone. It's like being like, 
having a house, right? And looking at your yard and being like, yeah, I don't like when people step on my grass. I'm going to just ignore when they step on my grass and not let it get to me because I don't like it. But I don't want to be bothered by it because I feel like bothering, being bothered by it gives it energy. So I'm not going to be like, what? If you don't like people stepping on the grass, tell them you don't like people. You, you don't want them to step on your grass. Build a fucking fence. Set your boundaries. Damn it. But why would I not set the boundary? Why have I not said something to these people? Why have I not said out loud, I do not appreciate this. Please do not talk to me like this. This does not work for me. Why haven't I done that? Because keeping the peace. Now, what the fuck peace am I keeping? Let's dive in, shall we? The peace that I'm keeping is my perception of their inability to comply, all right? Or my perception of their immature response to me setting that boundary, which results in an inability to comply or an attempt to kind of argue my boundary or dismiss my boundary and I don't want to experience that so I don't dive in and it's like that is their problem somebody's inability to respect your boundary is their issue not yours taking that on is not your responsibility Taking on the emotions, the reactions, the responses, the anything of another person, the feelings of another person is not your responsibility. You have zero control over that. Zero. You cannot make people do, feel, say anything, right? When you think about it like that, that begs the question for me, why do I expect that a person's going to respond with pushback to my boundaries? Why am I expecting that the people I hold near and dear, that I'm allowing into my space to not respect me? And then why am I saying, yeah, I don't think they'll respect me, so I'm not gonna set my boundaries hard and in stone because I don't want to experience the disrespect that I think that they would disrespect me with. And I want to keep them in my space. Like, so you're saying that you want to keep people around you you think are going to disrespect you anyway. Does that make sense? It does not make sense. So as we work through this, then you're like, well, do I think that they would disrespect me? Like they're in my life. Like we have this relationship. We have this friendship. Blah, blah, blah. Why do you default to expecting disrespect, expecting pushback, expecting gaslighting, expecting invalidating, right? Why? Every time I've tried to set this boundary in the past, this is the response I've gotten. You know, people always treat me like this, so I just roll with it and I don't want to whatever, or I, I don't feel safe even articulating and setting that boundary. You have to really understand why, if you follow that thought process the way that I just illustrated. You have to understand why it is that you are expecting maltreatment and wanting to gloss that over to keep this person in your life. A lack of self-worth. You feel like you deserve that. But those same people will say, I deserve this, I deserve that, but then accept and move like this, which is a complete contradiction to saying, I deserve these things which are up here. And then we engage and we entertain that which is down here as if we're scared to lose holding up a mirror to somebody's bullshit and and you actually getting to see how stupid it is is dangerous like it's gonna make you lose and you see that as oh i don't want to i don't want to be in that i have to let that go we have to let go of this notion of holding on to this imaginary piece holding on to people and focus on holding on to our piece and holding on to ourselves. So many times I see people say like, you know, I lost myself trying to find them or keep them and blah, blah, blah. And you know how that starts? It starts with needing their validation. When you need someone's validation, you move and you make changes and you make adjustments that 
to you that yield you that validation, which tends to move you right out of alignment with who you are. And it lowers you. And it puts you in a place where you're doing things, you're saying things, you're trying to be things that don't align with you and what you truly believe deep, deep down. And that version of you that you become, that you were trying to be for this person's, you know, for the nature of this, you and this person's relationship, or to keep the peace, ends up being a version of you that the person she was trying to keep the peace between doesn't even like, doesn't want, and they leave. And then you wonder, you're like, what the fuck? And you're like, it's just a really fucked up place to be in, and I've been there. I've realized it's not about learning to love yourself. It's really about letting go of all these things and, and, and experiences and pain that has made you question should you because when you're born you're full of love for yourself like it's like you're born and you're full of just clear water right and as you get older you start to get in like dirty water you know people the way people treat you and which is really not your responsibility right it's, it's on them that's their life that's the way that they whatever that's their shit and you take it in, but people are attracted to you because of who you are and your clean water, your pure, beautiful, amazing self. But you allow the dirty water that they come with to get in you. And instead of realizing that's dirty water, let me get some more clean water. We start saying, well, I I'm dirty water and I only deserve dirty water. And so we go and we unintentionally invite in more of that dirty water because again, we're arguing and negotiating our boundaries or we're not speaking up on them or we're expecting maltreatment or we're unwilling to set the boundary because we're in, we're in fear of losing the person. We're in fear of losing the relationship. We're in fear of causing trouble. Nobody that needs to be, mm, damn. Nobody that needs to be in your life is going to say that you setting boundaries is an issue. No one that is meant to be there is going to take issue. And even if they do, they will realize as you hold to your boundaries that they're taking issue with that was a reflection of their inability to set that in their own life, right? And they will grow and they will learn and they will meet you where you are, right? But so many of us, we kind of move opposite to that and we when we're single or you know we don't have these friendships we're like okay yeah like this is what i want and it's so easy to think about what we want and, and imagine it and kind of live in the end so to speak but then when a person gets presented to us and we start to get attached to this person and attach this idea of what we want and their role in that we can maybe lose sight of what it is we actually want because now we're fixated, fixated on making this be that, right? Instead of staying fixated on this here. And bottom line, what it comes down to is your self-concept and knowing what you want and believing that you, like your cup is full on its own. And when you're focused on your cup, when dirty water gets into your cup, you're going to fill it with more clean water because there's a beautiful, beautiful illustration that I could, we're about to fucking do it. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all got me started. <laughs> okay, so there's this beautiful illustration. Um, you may or may not have seen this before, but we have it, we're gonna dive in. I'm so excited. Okay, so this is you. This is you when you're born. This is you at your highest self. This is who you are at your core, okay? This is who God made you to be. This is who God sees you as, okay? Now, I'm wasting my B12 drops for this, so listen up. This is what happens when people mistreat us and they start being dickheads to us and we allow that to fuck with our shit. You know, somebody cheats on you. Somebody says you ain't shit. Somebody, 
doesn't respect you people didn't love you people abandoned you um whatever childhood traumas you fucking fill in the blank now this is how most of us proceed through life after that carrying the burden of this and we go on expecting more of this to be given to us and when i say you have to work on your self-concept what i'm saying simply is what i'm saying that we have to do is work on your self-concept okay work on love for yourself pour into your cup with the love that you know that you deserve with who god made you to be okay you keep affirming your awesomeness your love your worthiness and over time you will see that that messy dirty water bullshit leaves and what's there is the clean clear beautiful you that god made you to be okay i need need more affirmations <laughs> um but you get the point right so many of us we go through such bad negative experiences and those things are painful no doubt absolutely no doubt about it no doubt about it that those things suck that you did not deserve that that they are painful experiences but it is your response not your fault that those things happen to you it's not that fault your fault that that person cheated on you it's not your fault that your parents were emotionally unavailable it's not your fault that people you know don't listen to you when you talk it's not your fault that people don't show up for you but it is your responsibility to heal to let go of those things how you do that is just fill your cup fill your cup with the things that you know to believe about yourself how do you get there we'll start with the best highest version of yourself start with what you truly want get clear about that allow yourself to be a kid and believe anything is possible okay don't let that dirty water clutter your mind and make you like lower your ceiling for possibility open yourself up dare to dream about a love that honors and respects you doesn't and, and fulfills you and pushes you to be better dare to dream about a life of freedom and expression and joy every day dare to dream about those things then you think about how do i feel in this relationship how do i feel in this new space how do i feel with this healthy body how do i feel with this you know um, ritual or practice in my life and think about how you feel in those things then think about what do you do? What do you do every day living your best life? How do you move in this relationship? What's a typical day with your partner like? What's a typical day at your job like? I need you deeply enveloped in that experience like it's a fucking movie. Like you're reading a book and you're getting the imagery and you're feeling, you're tasting, you're smelling, you're loving, you genuinely feel your heart feel warm at the excitement of these things and how you would feel in them. And then you affirm, you affirm that you're worthy, that you're deserving, that you're chosen, that you're valued, that you're loved. You affirm all those things with yourself. There are so many meditations on YouTube, affirmations um, that you can do. And I would say the biggest thing that has helped me with my self-concept is listening to affirmations at night. Okay, because that is when your subconscious brain is wide open. And when while you're sleeping, if you're filling it with that positivity, that love for yourself, that encouragement, I am worthy, I am deserving, I am amazing, I am, you know, beautiful, I am effortlessly sexy, I am a, a magnet for my, like whatever it is, whatever it is, right? You're filling that in with your subconscious over time. I mean, I've been doing this consistently, I would say, for like 10 days. And I have seen dramatic improvement. And mind you, I've been working on this for a while now. But it has grown, I have grown in my self-concept exponentially over the course of the last week and a half. So I'm telling you that it is so possible for you to live the life that you want, to have the things that you want, 
it all starts with your self-concept and your self-worth and what you think you deserve, okay? To get back to the topic, your boundaries and your inability to set them are a reflection of you, sweetheart, okay? And you can change that. I want you to really understand what I'm saying. You can change that. I empower you to take responsibility, take ownership for your ability to move forward, not for the things that put you in this place in the first place, but your ability to move forward, your ability to be who you want to be, to feel and to live and to enjoy and to bask in the ambiance of who it is that you know deep in your core being that you are, okay? Dare to do that, dare to take responsibility for that, and I promise you things will turn the fuck over. Well, they won't turn around, they'll just get better. <laughs> okay, so anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I absolutely had a fucking ball making this. Um, and I hope that this helps. I know we kind of just, we went from one thing to the fucking other. Um, but again, I really do feel deep, 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 deep in my heart that this is going to help you guys. And it's helping me articulate what it is that I'm seeing happen in my life and how I'm seeing the ball get rolling. And so I hope that you find as much benefit as I have. And I will see you guys in my next video. I love you. Um, we'll do a house tour soon. Um, oh, I'm so excited. Um, I hope you really guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.